Good morning, my little misers. It's time once again to enjoy a hobby made for princes on the budget of a pupper. So I have had a lot of requests from viewers asking me where on earth I'm getting bases for just one penny. That question is fair, since not only are commercial miniatures expensive, commercial figure bases can be just as costly, especially the fancy terrain type bases that I use. So today, the episode you have all been waiting for, I will finally reveal my secrets to one penny bases. Let's start with the easy stuff first. There are three basic ways to get piles of round 25 millimeter or so bases for a penny each. The first choice is wooden discs. Here's a good example of a website that sells wooden discs. As you can see, very cheap and just right for bases. The next candidate is poker chips and counting chips. These plastic discs are thin and come in a good variety of diameters for all sorts of miniatures. They are cheap to buy and you can also harvest those from other games pretty easily. Finally, there are fashion buttons. You may know from my Violet Fungus episode that one inch buttons can be gotten for free if you're clever. Yo! And they come in so many nice styles. Uh, here's a few with fitting designs that I picked out of the bin. Now you can use any of these as is and get to modeling. However, I want to show you the advanced technique for making fancier terrain bases. You can make whatever size base or bases you need for this project, and in fact this is a good way to get odd sized or odd shaped bases that are harder to find. So I can use a larger 70 millimeter base for my collection. I'm going to start with the lid uh, from a can of tomato paste to be the foundation. If you're using poker chips or wooden discs or whatever, it will work exactly the same. Just do whatever you want. I used one of those perfect can openers to make a smooth, safe edge on my can lid. For the terrain, I traced the lid over a scrap of foam core and sliced it into bricks. I'm going for a crumbling ruin style base here, but of course, your base can be whatever you imagine. Uh, you could easily cut dungeon tiles or wooden planks. You can make a sci-fi version with scrap metal or technology. When I have my bricks cut, I simply lay down a thick layer of PVA and start covering the lid. I filled the gaps with more glue and sand and made sure to cover all the exposed can edges and let that dry. After it dried, I gave it a good coat of Mod Podge to seal in the loose sand and harden the foam. It is also good for the next step to have a smooth shell around the base. I want to make a lot of these bases, so I'm going to make a mold. And to do that, I'm going to need a mold box. This is simply a tray that I made with scraps of foam core cut to roughly equal sizes and then held together with hot glue, making sure to reinforce the joints really well. I made the box just a little bit wider and just a little bit taller than the base that I want to copy because I don't want to waste silicone. Just enough to make the mold. When the box is built, I can glue the master base inside, and I also applied more Mod Podge around the edge of the base to keep silicone from slipping underneath it. Now normally, this is the part from a regular hobby video where the crafter shows you how to mix and pour a two-part silicone mold. This stuff makes great molds. However, it is not wallet friendly. It costs quite a bit of money for what you get. And if I were to use it, those bases would cost way more than a penny. So I have to do it the miserly way, and that starts with bathroom silicone. At the hardware store, you will find this in standard tubes for anywhere between $2 and $5 for about 10 ounces. It comes in a variety of colors, even clear, and should say 100% silicone on the tube. If it is white, or black, or almond, or clear, does not matter. But if it doesn't say 100% silicone, don't buy it. 
There is enough in one tube to make about 8 to 12 4 inch square molds depending on how thick you make them. The thinner your base is, the more molds you can make, but no matter what you make, one tube will set you up with base molds for a very long time. Now, unlike the pourable stuff, we're going to make a putty instead. Bathroom caulk isn't good for your tummy, so get a big plastic bowl that you don't use for cereal, something strong to stir with, some good plastic gloves, some vegetable oil, some food coloring, and a box of cornstarch. Also, I would do this outside because this silicone stinks like really strong vinegar, and uh, you really want some fresh air while you're doing this. To start, squeeze a good sized blob of silicone about the size of your mold box into the bowl and add a few drops of whatever food coloring you like. Adding this colored water will start the vulcanizing process so you'll have about 10 minutes to get this done. Stir that really well until all the color is just about incorporated and well mixed in. Then rub some oil all over your gloves. This crap is sticky like you never saw, uh, but the oil will mostly keep it off your fingers. Start sprinkling cornstarch on the blob and knead it in. Just keep dumping starch on and kneading until the blob turns opaque and starts forming into a softball like Play-Doh. When it does this, it won't stick anymore, so you can take off your gloves and finish kneading it. Now it's ready. Press it into your mold box all around your base. You want to mash it really good all around so that it gets all the details. You also want to level the top because when you use it, that top will become the bottom. So you want that as flat and level as you can to make sure that your bases come out flat and level also. So when you have it all mashed in, let it sit and vulcanize for at least four hours. I usually let it go overnight just to be safe. And that's it. When it's solid, it's ready to start casting. You can use your new mold to cast bases in clays and resins, or I like to use dental plaster mixed in with a little PVA in the water because it is the absolute cheapest. I mix it to a pancake batter-like consistency and scrape the bottom of the bases to make sure they are even and flat. If you use plasters for your bases, I also advise painting the bottoms with Mod Podge to protect them and to add a little bit more strength. As promised, an unlimited supply of penny bases. Now some of you might be getting crazy ideas about using these molds to make other things besides bases like loot piles or scatter terrain and even dungeon tiles. So let me make one thing very, very clear. Yeah, you can do that. Go ahead. I do it all the time. Just don't use it to cast food, so no chocolate bases. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more good game stuff for cheapos, smash that like button and subscribe.